YMT Mountain News at 6. Tonight, new developments in the investigation at a Letcher County business. Someone smashed the front door of Summit City yesterday morning in Whitesburg. Here's a look at the damage. A short time ago, we learned police arrested 19-year-old Ethan Lewis. WYMT's Macy Marie is live from downtown Whitesburg. She tells us what Lewis is accused of stealing and how investigators caught him. Macy. Steve, I'm way in the back of Summit City. This is the back door all boarded up now. And usually what it leads to is the back porch. We're on a nice day like today. People are out enjoying some food and drinks with their friends. But early Thursday morning, this door, well, it's all boarded up because someone was not using it to get to the back porch. Instead, employees say a man took a cinder block threw it through the glass, smashing it all over. And police say that man was Ethan Lewis. Police say after Ethan Lewis crawled through the bottom part of the door here, he then stole some liquor and a good chunk of cash. Employees didn't say exactly how much cash that was because that amount is how much they used to open and close the store each day. They didn't want to make that public information but they did say it's enough to hurt the business. And when something like this happens, employees say it doesn't just hurt the business, it hurts the way people view the entire community. When you do something like that, you're, you're not gaining anything from it because you're making your, the place where you live worse. Like you're taking money out of the pockets of people who are trying to make this a better town. Police say they arrested Ethan Lewis early this morning. He faces some burglary and drug possession charges. They were not able to get the money or the liquor back, but employees say despite what happened, they're not letting this hold them back. They're back open today. There are people in here having a good time with their friends, and there's even live music later on tonight. For now, live in downtown Whitesburg, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Macy, thank you. A Laurel County woman claims her boyfriend held her against her will and beat her. Employees at a Walmart say the woman was hiding in the store to get away from the man. Elmo Carroll is now facing charges, but he says the claims against him are not true. WYMT's Phil Pendleton talked to him in the jail. The Laurel County Jail. 147, true. Place Elmo Clinton Carroll admits he served time in before. Different, I've had a record. I've had, you know, uh, different things wrong with me also, you know what I mean, as instability. But, but this time, the 35 year old is accused of assault fourth degree and unlawful imprisonment. Her, her story to us was that she had been held against her will in a tent on his uncle's property. Police say she ran for help at Walmart when the two went shopping there. She was found with old and newer looking bruises on her face. I've never held a woman against her will. I've never turned around ever hurt a woman. Truly, I've never hurt a woman. Yet in March of 2016, we discovered this citation. Elmo C. Carroll was charged with multiple offenses from a fight with his girlfriend and her father. He pleaded guilty to two counts of assault fourth and other charges. Now he's accused of hitting a woman again and again when she tried to leave the tent they were living in. And they went to Walmart and that gave her an, a chance to escape. And when she got into the store, she had the wits about her to get store personnel to assist her and they did. You know, I'm hoping to get a fair trial or, or anything on this because I didn't do it. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Police say the victim's injuries were not serious enough to require medical treatment. Tonight, we are trying to gather more information about a serious crash this afternoon in Perry County. It happened on Highway 80 near East Perry Elementary. A car slammed into the back of a tractor trailer. The driver of the car was rushed to Hazard ARH. That person's name and condition is not known right now. The road was partially shut down for a while as police worked to reconstruct the crash. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says a death investigation is underway after deputies found a burned body on a driveway. Deputies say they received a call from Yorkshire Estates Road that a body was on fire. Authorities responded to the scene and found a burned body. That body was taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy. The person's name is not being released at this time.
It's a beautiful evening here at the Perry County Park where we actually have a bike show going on behind us. This night's just full of many fun things here in the mountains. Let's go ahead and take you to US 119, US 23 over into Jenkins where we are seeing plenty of sunshine. We've seen that really throughout the day. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s feeling pretty great out there. It's definitely a very, very pleasant evening. Wind speeds, they're starting to move out the southwest, so it's going to start to bring in that warmer air, especially as we head into the weekend. Satellite and radar, you'll notice as we take a look at that, we are just seeing a clean sweep there. Forecast for tonight into the upper 50s, clear night ahead. Going to be pretty comfortable as we head to the overnight hours, even warmer as we head into the weekend. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, thank you very much, Paige. 77 years later, the family of a Pikeville native who died as a teenager during World War II will get to say a proper goodbye. Millard Burke served in the Navy and his ship was hit by a Japanese plane at Pearl Harbor. Burke, along with the remains of more than 400 other men, were buried in what is known as the Punch Bowl in Hawaii. For decades, Burke's remains were not accounted for until recent DNA testing. WIMT's Connor James talked with relatives of Burke to learn more about him. It's been more than three quarters of a century now. I find myself, you know, getting choked up over something I didn't even know. Young, energetic Millard Burke Jr. grew up around Pikeville. Unfortunately, of course, I never knew him, but I did hear a lot about him. That's his niece, Susan Duncan. Susan is the daughter of the youngest daughter in the family, Mildred. And she just said they spent a lot of time playing around together. And he was a very energetic, uh, meaning I, I think often mischievous boy at Pikeville High School. Millard, or Junior as they called him, decided to enlist in the Navy. Why? Two words is all the explanation needed. Why did you enlist? And he put, I care. His family still scared to see him go. Particularly sad is I think a lot was riding on this young man, on my uncle. Junior was on the USS Oklahoma, a ship stationed in Hawaii on December 7th, 1941. It was a sad day for more than just the family when Pearl Harbor happened. Junior's ship struck by a Japanese aircraft that day. I, thought, I can't imagine my grandmother losing two children. How difficult. That must have been. And uh, so it was a very sad day when he was killed. He joined thousands of others who lost their lives on that date, which will live in infamy. It, it's quite um, sad and yet good at the same time. Good because after all the years of not having closure on Junior, he will have a proper military burial in a soon to be marked grave fitting for a man who gave it all. Right, right, right. What he deserves. Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Burke will be buried at the Punch Bowl in Hawaii, surrounded by living relatives. That funeral will take place on July 19th. Governor Bevan will order flags be lowered to half staff on that day. Tonight, some new information on a man the Perry County Coroner's Office asked for help in finding family members. 80-year-old Richard Fluke died Tuesday. The coroner's office was trying to find his family and a man from Michigan actually saw our Facebook post and said he thought it was his uncle. Today we learned Fluke was honorably discharged from the military. He will likely be buried soon at the Veteran Cemetery in Hyden with full military honors. An interesting story out of Laurel County. The FBI was called in to remove a suspicious box Here's a picture of what was found. Deputies say this is a portable industrial radiographer. Radiation experts were called out to the property on Chapel Road this afternoon. Investigators say this was no danger to the public and it's been removed. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell continues to push for raising the tobacco age. Kentucky has the highest death rate of lung cancer in the country. It used to be big business here in the Commonwealth, but now our state has a fraction of the tobacco farms it did 20 years ago. Senator McConnell is hoping to raise the tobacco age from 18 to 21 to help young people avoid a bad habit. Raising the age from 18 to 21 it doesn't solve every problem, but it does certainly make it harder for those products to be purchased. The bill would also require states to pass their own laws matching or exceeding the 21 and up standard. 14 states already have those laws. Some doctors say it's already making a difference. Now, not only is today Flag Day, 
but it's also National Bourbon Day. Kentucky makes 95% of the world's bourbon supply. It's an almost $9 billion industry and generates 20,000 jobs in the Commonwealth. Ten years ago, Kentucky had eight distilleries. As of last year, there's 68. Bourbon must be made with at least 51% corn. Kentucky farms grow more than half of the corn used. And there are currently two barrels for every person living in Kentucky. Well, it's a beautiful day here in the mountains. Does that continue as we head into your Father's Day weekend? I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. And on a very foggy night 20 years ago, a UK Medical Center helicopter crashed in eastern Kentucky and it shocked the region. We will remember the victims on this somber anniversary.